What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to review what's arguably one of the best bikes Harley Davidson has ever put out. So today we are reviewing the 2024 CVO Rogue Glide ST. Now really quickly, before we get into the review, I wanna announce the giveaway winners, and I say winners with an S. So I said in my review of the Rogue Glide that I was gonna pick a random comment to give either a Tim's Harley Davidson t-shirt or Tim's Harley Davidson hat to. And I don't know if that was what inspired all the comments, but that video got over 900 comments, so it's really, really, really hard to pick just one. So I picked three. I'll throw them up on the screen right now so you can see who they are. If you've won, I've already sent you a message so I can get your details and get your stuff. But with that, I'm gonna do that again on this video. So all you have to do to be qualified to win either the Tim's hat or the Tim's shirt is be subscribed to the channel, and yes, I do check on that, and then leave a comment. It could be any comment at all. It could be your comments about the bikes. Uh, say whatever you wanna say, every comment counts, and I do pick them myself, but they are still random. I don't pick it based on if you say good things about me or good things about the bike or anything like that, I just randomly choose them. So drop your comments, make sure you're subscribed if you wanna be entered a chance to win because I'm gonna do three people again on this video. Now that that's out of the way, let's touch on what I said in the beginning of the video. This is arguably one of the best bikes that Harley Davidson has ever put out. I'm gonna do a full walk around review, show you guys this bike and let you make that decision for yourself. There has been a ridiculous amount of hype around this bike and in my opinion, rightfully so. So I know a lot of you have probably already seen it. I'm gonna show it to you up close, show you all the details, go over everything that makes up the CVO Rogue Glide ST, but I wanna give you a quick walk around just to show you the full bike before we get into it. This is the Raven Black color. Um, I do really, really like this color, but after having seen the white one in person, normally I like black bikes uh, better than any color, better than any other options but I think I may have to go with the white and I think it's just maybe the contrast, it, it pops a little more. But if you guys have seen both, let me know down in the comments which one you're feeling more. So we'll get some numbers out of the way and then we'll jump into the review. So MSRP on this bike is gonna be 42,999, which I feel like is really, really strong for all that you're gonna get. Now this bike just came out. It's a new bike, it's the hot bike, it's the one everybody's talking about. So are you gonna go into a dealership and pay $42,999? Well, of course you're not because there are other fees that Harley tacks on to that before this thing is out the door and then you have your tax tag title, all that good stuff. But a starting MSRP of $43,000, not too bad in my opinion. So let's talk about horsepower, and I really wanna get into that because I've already tested the horsepower. If you haven't seen that video, be sure and check it out. Harley Davidson claims 127 horsepower, 145 torque. So what a lot of people may not realize is those numbers they put on their website are gonna be the power to the crank, not to the rear wheel, which is like real world uh, power that you could feel. And that's a very common thing. Auto manufacturers do it as well. So thanks to Tim's Harley Davidson, I was able to put one of these bikes on the dyno just to pull and get the, the numbers, not to actually tune it or anything. And in track mode, we got 114 horse, 130 foot pounds of torque uh, versus the 127, 145 as advertised. That's actually really, really good. Typically from the crank to the wheel, you would lose a little bit more. So good job to Harley Davidson for getting those numbers up like they did. And then the last number we'll talk about is the weight, 838 pounds, which is a ton of weight for a motorcycle, but uh, they did get this weight down a good bit. And all things considered for a touring model Harley Davidson, that's not terrible. So I wanna start things out sitting on this bike so you can see what you would be looking at if you were riding the bike. Uh, I cannot start anywhere else but this console. So this is carbon fiber. It may look different than what you're used to because this is forged carbon fiber. A lot of people are used to the weave pattern. This is forged. Uh, I do really, really like this look. I also like the red accents. You can see 
25 years of CVO there, the little Harley badging with the carbon fiber in between. I really, really like this setup. This looks really nice. So looking at this inner fairing, you'll see that we do have Rockford Fosgate speakers. And I wanna point that out because I did the review on the regular Rogue Glide model for 24 and it did not have the Rockford. So the CVO ST will still have your Rockford audio. You get the 12.3 inch screen, which we'll turn on in just a second. These are the controls that Harley Davidson seems to be moving to. So we first saw these on the 2023 CVO models. Now we're seeing them on the regular Street Glide and Rogue Glide, and obviously on the CVO ST. So I do want to say they, they are high quality. You know, the fit and finish is really good on these, but as someone who's ridden Harley for a lot of years, you kind of get used to the layout and the simplicity. Uh, same thing, your audio is now on the right when it used to be on the left. So it's just a lot to take in, a lot to get used to. I wish there was a way to simplify some of this stuff, but I guess if you're buying one of these bikes, you're going to spend a lot of time in the seat and you will eventually get used to it. It's just for myself, someone who doesn't currently own a bike with these controls, it's a lot to take in. So we'll turn the screen on. You press this one time to turn the bike on and then you would press it again to start it, which we don't need to do right now. So you'll see everything comes up on the screen just like you're used to. And this thing has a ton of stuff. We won't get into all that, but you can make the screen white, black, you can move stuff around, all that good stuff. One thing I do wanna point out is that little icon in the corner. So that is track mode. This bike does come with different modes. Sorry, I had to zoom way in for the camera to pick it up. This bike comes with different modes. The track mode, when we dyno tuned it, is where we got the best numbers, the 114 horse and 130 torque. Uh, again, if you wanna know the other horsepower numbers in road mode and sport mode, be sure and check out that video. But this track mode was co-designed with Kyle Wyman, uh, Harley Davidson's top king of the bagger rider. And I think that's pretty rad. So that's not gonna be your red light to red light mode. Even Kyle Wyman was saying in a video that he put out, sport mode would still be your best mode for like your drag racing and stuff. Uh, the track mode is going to unlink your brakes so that you can control them independently. Do a bunch of other things. So track mode really does mean track mode in this bike. Uh, sport mode is still your regular sport mode. So you see we cycle through the modes and the camera just does not want to pick it up. But you have a rain mode, road mode, sport mode, and then track mode on this bike. You see you get a ton of information on the screen. You can bring up all kind of different stuff. Uh, navigation, if you want to run Apple CarPlay, it has to be connected to the bike, I'm told. Uh, if you want to run Harley's Navigation, it's now a subscription service, I'm told. So that's something that you're going to have to pay for, which I think is monthly. Also, while we're sitting on this bike, I want to point out the risers. So these are not going to be the same bar and riser setup that you get on your regular Rogue Glide model. Uh, this is a little more track inspired uh, height and layout. But the good thing about this setup is if you want to change your bars or risers, it's now much, much easier than it was on the 2023 and below road glides. So hopping back off the bike, we gotta talk about the tank badge. That's what we do here. So as you know, from watching my low rider and low rider ST videos, this is the same little decal they put on that. So I'm a big fan of that. The red looks really good on the black. And I actually really like the Eagle. Typically I wouldn't like a graphic that's that aggressive, but it's, it's kind of old school CVO. Uh, so I do, I really do dig it. And while we're here, let's talk about the elephant in the room, <laughs> literally in this massive 121 cubic inch Milwaukee 8. And this is the high output version. So it's gonna be a lot hotter in the tune. It's gonna have uh, a hotter cam in it than your regular 121. So putting this versus a CVO, this bike should take it any day. Uh, absolutely massive air cleaner which again uh, is inspired by your King of the Baggers bikes. They run much, much bigger, which I dig. The more performance stuff we go to, if you guys have watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that's my jam. So I am all for Harley Davidson doing this. I also want to point out, I know this engine cover here throws a lot of people off because we first saw this shape in 23 with the CVOs that have the variable valve timing. This does not. They're just going with this engine casing. 
only your regular CVO models have it. Uh, your regular Road Glide and Street Glide are going to have this same case. Non VVT, if it doesn't say VVT right here, it is a non VVT bike. So I do want to point that out. Now, if you haven't seen these storage compartments, they look a little bit different than what we're used to. I was very happy to see you have a USB C. So Harley Davidson is getting with the times. Also, I guess with this being a CVO, you get this nice liner. When I reviewed the Road Glide, this was not in there. And, and that's a little detail, but it's the little details that make up the CVO and make it special. So your other side is gonna look exactly like that. Moving around to the outside of the fairing, this was the controversial part, the headlight. People either love it, hate it. Uh, they say Harley copied Indian. They say it looks like a spaceship. You know, there's all kind of stuff out there. Let me know where you guys are at. As I said in my video of the regular Road Glide model, I don't dislike it by any means. I already do like the Street Glide, the new fairing on the Street Glide, but I'm still kind of warming up, not to the fairing, but to the headlight. So I get people's criticism, but I don't dislike it. I don't think it's ugly and I don't think it looks like an Indian, but you guys let me know what you think. So on the front of this bike, they put, you know, the 25th anniversary, 25 years of CVO, 99 to 2024, which I can appreciate, but I don't know that I would necessarily want that on my bike if I had the option. You also notice that you have Harley Davidson branded on this streaked up windshield that I did a terrible job of wiping off, but I do like the Harley Davidson branding on the front of there. Before we move on, we have to talk about this. Easily the best setup Harley Davidson has ever done. All the things I complained about have been addressed on this model. So you do get inverted front end. You also get like, it's like a DLC coating, I think, on your lower forks, which eventually will kind of fade away, but it looks really good now. You get the forged carbon fiber fender that matches your tank console. You get these big rotors. I'm not sure who makes these rotors. If you know, please leave me a comment and let me know. They look like Galfer, but I don't see any branding on them, so I'm not sure. Obviously, we know who makes the calipers, and those are Brembo. Those look really good. It'd be real easy to throw some red on the Brembo lettering to kind of tie it in with the rest of the bike. I think that would look hot. You get the steel braided lines. You get the nice wheels with the little CVO ST logo. The front of this bike is easily the best I've ever seen Harley Davidson do. Now, one thing that I didn't point out when we were sitting on the bike is the suspension. Again, the camera doesn't wanna focus just because of the light, but you'll see you have adjustments on both sides. Uh, so it is fully adjustable suspension front and rear which again, I was very happy to see Harley Davidson do. We'll get to the rear in just a second. But looking at this side of the bike, so being that this is a performance bike, if you will, although it's a CVO, and on your CVO models, you typically get the hill shifter, which they stopped putting on the regular models. I guess it being the ST track version of the bike, there's no hill shifter. I don't care, I hate them anyway. Uh, you also get these new floorboards, which, I was tripping out about when I first saw, because for a stock floorboard, I feel like they're not horrible. Would I change them? Sure. But they look a lot better than what used to come on bikes. Here, let's go take a look at those. So for those saying the ones I just showed you were ugly, this is what we normally get. So for perspective, I feel like the ones on the ST look pretty dang good. Unfortunately, one thing I've found about these is they are very, very slick. So your feet can slide around on there pretty easily, which was a bummer because they didn't look terrible. Also, just because I'm nitpicky, I have to point it out, just like I've done on every other bike that has this, that horn location um, and appearance is absolutely terrible. I don't know why we don't have a horn cover or find somewhere better to put the horn. But again, if that's my only gripe, Harley did pretty good. Also, maybe we should have talked about it on the other side, but we didn't. So Harley's engine guard may look pretty familiar. <laughs> Not saying I was the first to do it, clearly I wasn't. I bought that engine guard 
with the skateboard wheels from a company that manufactures it. Not an original idea, but it's good to see Harley catching up to what we've been doing. Now on this side of the bike, you have the Fast Johnny Pig. And that was one of the things that kind of bummed me out on the original Fast Johnny bike was the pig on the side of the tank. Let me show you really quickly. So I absolutely love the Fast Johnny paint job. It's probably my favorite paint set or paint collection that Harley Davidson has ever done. But when it came to this side of the tank, I was not sold. I love what the pig represents and I do know the backstory and stuff, but I just don't love that graphic on the tank. I do like where they put it on the ST a lot better. It's a little more subtle, it's not in color because on the other side of the ST tank, it looks like that. And that's what I feel like that side should have looked like. Now your saddlebags are the saddlebags that are coming on all the bikes now that again, we saw in 23 on the CVO, which is now standard equipment on the Street Glide and Road Glide models. Uh, nothing really changed inside. They still mount the same way, still come off the same way, still have the same one touch. They just have a little bit different shape. And if you haven't seen, I'll kind of show you how they're tapered down that way. And then we'll show you the, the bike from the back here. Now, one thing I want to talk about. So when the photos kind of leaked of this bike, all you could see was that these were the piggyback shocks. Uh, so I automatically assumed they were the Olins since Harley Davidson has a Screaming Eagle Olins collab piggyback shock. These are not. So these shocks are from Showa, which is who makes Harley Davidson's front suspension. And they make the suspension on every Harley Davidson model. So they have a lockout on Harley Davidson bikes. So if it's a production bike coming with suspension, it has to be Showa. Um, no, no gripes there for me. Uh, Showa is a, a good company. I have some of their stuff on some of my dirt bikes. So I can't imagine anybody would absolutely have to upgrade them, but that is something I want to address because it's something that I got wrong. While we're up here, uh, let's talk about this. So this is also your forged carbon fiber. All this is is a seat cowl. So it's kind of a nod to the race bike as well. So when you, un here, we'll take it off. When you unscrew that, it literally just pops off. And if you'll remember, this is how the original ST models came with a solo seat. No passenger setup, meaning no passenger seat and no passenger pegs, which is the same case on this. But I think when they put that little bump in the ST seat, they probably stepped back and looked and said, oh, that's not gonna work. So they came up with this cowl, which I really like. Obviously it's hollow for the weight savings because what good is carbon fiber if you add a bunch of weight to it? Uh, and I think they were right to do so. You also have this really nice uh, little rubber patch on there sewn into it, CVO ST. Dig the colors, dig the contrast, dig this seat. Uh, Harley nailed it on this bike. Now I wanna go back around to the back of the bike because I wanna show you something I noticed that I thought was strange. So if you look at the exhaust, you'll see that it looks kind of rolled, uh, rolled to the outside. And this side is a little more than this side. Um, this exhaust is not a perfect like oval shape anyway, but I'm not really sure what the reason for rolling them was. Obviously from the side, they figured that out and they've still got the branding, you know, leveled out and stuff. And it doesn't bother me. If anything, it's a little different. I haven't seen it before. Maybe it looks a little racy. So I don't dislike it, but I do think that that will bother some people, especially if you're very OCD. Now, one thing about these mufflers is they are something that we haven't seen yet, and that's because they have a carbon fiber tip on the end, as well as these being titanium. Now, the only problem with that is these are Screaming Eagle pipes, which I realize Harley Davidson can only do what they can do based on EPA regulations. They really have to choke this bike down but I know most people don't go with Screaming Eagle exhaust, they go with something else. So you're gonna end up taking off this really high-end exhaust that you realistically pay a lot of money for because it's titanium and carbon fiber. And I don't know what you're gonna do with it once you take it off. I don't know if there's really a good aftermarket for it or not, but what I do know is with the numbers that this bike made, as corked up as they have to come to meet the EPA regulations, that if you were to put an open exhaust and a better tune in this bike, 
you would be making some serious power without having to open up that engine. So that is your 2024 CVO Rogue Glide ST in a nutshell. Now, obviously there's some things we didn't go over for the sake of keeping this video kind of short. Yes, I will be doing a test ride on this video. I didn't do it on the white one for those of you that watched the dyno thing and I said I was gonna go ride it. Uh, that bike ended up gonna be a dealer trade, was going to a customer in Florida. And I know that if my bike showed up and had a bunch of miles on it, I probably would not take delivery of it. So I didn't wanna put a bunch of miles on that guy's bike. But as far as I know, this one does not have a current buyer. So if I get here tomorrow, and that's still the case, I will definitely ride this one. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. Don't forget, subscribe and leave a comment if you wanna be entered in the chance to win one of these Tim's Harley-Davidson's hats or one of the Tim's Harley-Davidson shirts. The backs of these things are really cool. And moving forward, I will be announcing winners in like the following video. So obviously we wanna give it two or three days for that video to get some comments. I'll randomly pick three people and then I'm gonna announce the winners in one of my future videos. So be sure you check those out. Subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.